Welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For additional resources, consider supporting me on Patreon. We've just put a host of membership rewards up there, things like access to exclusive monthly live streams, coupon codes for my tab store, and copies of Runes, my new EP. For information about the guitars, pedals, and sound settings that you're hearing, go ahead and click in the description box underneath in, in YouTube. Now, let's get to learning. Our progression is essentially D minor, G minor, C, F. That's what we're going off here. Let's look at what I did. So I'm breaking up that D minor I don't know why, just cause. Five on the D, seven, six. I guess so I could really pop those, the thirds of it there. I'll walk down to the G, and it's just five, four, three. Again, yeah, pop in the thirds of the G minor. You could have done it like that, but. I think I wrap my thumb around just cause. Three and three on the G and the B. Open D, C chord, hit the O and the one there, the fifth and the root again. There's this walk up, zero on the low E, and then those, those two there, F, just a power chord, one, three, three, little arpeggio there. Slide from five to three. Let's look at that again. God, that's fun. Okay, and then... That's me copying Billy's woo-hoo. So that is on my G string. Ten, seven. I hit an open D before. Here's that walk down now an octave higher on the D string, seven, six, five. There's a G minor chord right there. So I'm grabbing, once I land on that G, seven, eight. And then this is the same. Melody. So fun. So yeah, this is me copping some of the Mark Rabot 30 kind of things that he does in the, the Cuban stuff that he does. Uh, and so the melody is really, was it? So to make it a little fuller, I harmonize a third below, seven and six, five and five, three, three, three. Which if I'm thinking right, yeah, that fits in the key of D minor. <laughs> So yeah, music theory does help being able to find my scale on every string, you know, because the thirds are really just, when I explain this, it's like you're, you're, it's a chorus section. So if that's the melody, you're telling, hey, hey, tenors, come on in and sing a third lower, but be in the key. Together. So if you're a backup singer in the band, that's your job also. Usually you're going higher, but in this case, we're going lower. There's our melody now. It's all around here. I put it in a weird kind of way because, well, of where I was going. So that's on my G string. Seven, five, nine, seven, five, nine. I wanted to put a little Jimi Hendrix in there, a little. Just because I always sneak those in if I can. So that is, yeah, on that last part, I bring in middle finger there on the six of the B. And then, yeah, do the, the seven, five. Side note, it's tempting to try and go, to go like that. This is not ever really gonna work, at least very well for me. These two fingers, the way your, our hands are built, they, don't, they can't do those stretches as well as, that's why you see me do index, middle, and then pinky. You see those also if you do Andy Summers chords, like the... Some of my students try and do this, and you can, but I really don't recommend it that much. Okay, anyway. 
Oh, where am I? A little pick up for the next part of the melody. That's just five on the G string, five, seven, five. And then I kind of cut to really, I'm cutting to the next verse though. More thirds, 10 and 10 on the G and B. 10, 10, nine and eight, seven and six. And it's actually okay if you want to make it wonky to let the high E in. Yeah, it, it won't ruin it, it'll just make it a little bit, what's that on? It's off of the G minor. Ooh. No, wait, it's on the D minor, isn't it? Yeah, it'll just make it stranger. Same thing. And then, there's a little pickup right there. Oh, but working too hard. So yeah, that's the yeah, but. And that's just six and five on the B and the G. There's the five just going up to six. Possibly the most fun part. <laughs> what is that chord there? Oh, because the chord's actually a G9. Uh, and so I'm letting it, and you know, that's the crazy part of the song that everybody loves to sing along. Heart attack, ack, 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 ack. So that chord there, yeah, that makes sense. There's our triad, there's our seventh. And then having that open E on top, you know, that's a caged. There's a G. So I'm in first inversion. Pinky on the, starting on the D string. Nine, seven, six, zero. Nice, yeah. Great chord. That's the you ought to know by now. More thirds. Seven and six, nine and eight, 10 and 10, back down, land on the five and five. Because I think, yeah, that that's going to, is it going to? Yeah, so that's actually on a C at that point. So it makes sense that it's on five and five. My favorite part of my whole arrangement right there. I love that lick. I don't know, it makes me smile every time. Because that's really, sometimes I leave the melody because that's a, who needs a house out in Hackensack? Is that all you get for your money? So I just kind of bent it. So I'm gonna be crawling up three, four, and zero, because it's going back to D minor. One and one, which is really a D minor seven. So I'm just stabbing them. Yeah, out in Hackensack. <laughs> that's how I did that melody. Two, three, oh, so that's on my G, my D. And I know it's dropping to a G minor again. So I did, I don't know why I do the things I do sometimes. Three, three, let the, let the zero in two if you want. So that lick again. That might, yeah, might be the coolest slash mo most Mark Rebeau slash a little bit of Robert Quine in there too. Is that all you get for your money? And there's a little Hendrix in that little lick there. That all you get for your money. There's, you know, it's on an F chord. There's an F structure. And so where am I? Five on the D. Eight. There's one my little Jimmy. F flat at the five and five of the D and G. Hammer on the seven. Land back on that. And then... That's off of, it's, we're moving into the pre-chorus section. We got B flat. There's our B flat chord, sixth fret of the B. Seven, seven. There's our melody. Seven, seven, oh wait, six, six, seven, seven, eight, six, eight, five, seven, seven, five. I don't know if I can say it and play it at the same time. Then it's going to move down to an A. What a great, I mean, great song craftsman. So here we are in an A chord. Five, six, six, seven, five, three. That's right. 
And again, I snuck a little Hendrix right here <laughs> on, on that. And that's, um, uh, where am I? Uh, again, yeah, I guess that's back to a B flat. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so there I am with my five, six, hammer on to the seven. Get that pinky out to that eight. This is tricky. Eight on the D. Eight, five, eight, seven. Then, yeah, because that's on a B flat. That makes sense. Where am I? Yeah, that's off of a B flat. And that's actually on a giant E minor 7 flat 5 chord. Hence why I do this next thing. Oh, I can't remember where I am. Now we're on an E minor 7 flat 5, so I move up. It's just first inversion of it, which is 10, 8, 9. Here comes an A7, 0, 11, 12. Yep. Back to D minor, and I'm just doing a unison 5 and 0. This is a strangely one of the hardest parts to cop the silly little horn thing. Ah. So, it's harmonized sixes, uh, you know, proof of, of their usefulness. There's our melody, and underneath it, in the key, because where's my D minor? Yeah. Yeah, paint it black. So, yeah, you kind of have to see your chord, and then also see the lower part of the scale as well to be able to go. So here I am. That is seven and six, hybrid picking. Eight and eight, 10 and 10, jump. 14, 13, 12 and 11, 10 and 10, eight and eight, that's the first one. And then it just starts lower. So that's five and five, seven and six, ten and ten. And then it doesn't go up as high because it started lower. So it's like the same pattern, just a little like everything shifted back one. Twelve and eleven, ten and ten, and then eight and eight, back to the seven and six. And then it comes around again. I did a really silly thing at the end. I land on what's called the Picardy Third Music Theory Trick, which makes that into a giant D major. It's a silly thing you'll sometimes hear in classical pieces, where a whole song is in a minor key, and just at the very last chord, they're like, da 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 da. They'll end in a major, just, just to make it, I don't know, it does have a nice thing to it, where you're like, oh, what was, oh, I, feel, I feel nice after that's over. There you go. One thing I'd like to point out about Billy Joel. Look at his melodies, look at his chords, look at the way he builds things. I feel like there is just so much Beatles in what he does. I feel like he's very McCartney-esque in his craftsmanship and the way things move and just flow so perfectly. Um, I love Billy Joel. I mean, The Stranger is one of those records along with like Michael Jackson Thriller. Tom Petty, Full Moon Fever, Paul Simon, Graceland. These are the records that we're playing for as long as I can remember when I was a little kid, so it's part of my DNA. Um, I know Billy Joel is maybe an acquired taste to some, so I thought it would be a fun game to take Mark Rabot, who is another acquired taste, and <laughs> combine them. I don't know if the two have ever actually played together or ever met, but in my imagination, maybe this is what would have happened if they did. Anyway, have fun with that. Thanks for watching.